Over the last few years, there has been a massive rise in popularity when it comes to budget cinema lenses. And now it is almost overwhelming when it comes to choosing between them. But the ones I'm about to talk about today may be just the most important ones released to date. So in this video, we're going to find out what makes them different from other budget cinema lenses, what I do and do not like about this lens set, and finally, what the image quality looks like and when we should actually be using them. Let's start with one of the best features of these lenses. I'm talking about how they work across so many cameras and why none of it actually matters and you should ignore them all. Of course, we have PL mount for ARRI and all of the other high budget top of the line cinema cameras. Of course, we have E mount for Sony cameras. We have RF mount for Canon cameras and the odd red camera, etc. We have L mount, which is now Blackmagic, Panasonic Lumix, Sigma. And finally, we have G mount, which is for Fuji. You'd find it pretty difficult to get a camera that these lenses are not compatible with. So why do I say that you should ignore them all and only buy one of the mounts? Let's say that you have one of the fantastic new Sony cameras like an A7S, FX3, FX6. It seems really logical for you to buy the E-mount lenses. But let's say that Canon decide to do a really big push or Panasonic, Blackmagic, RED, whoever, and they become the new top dogs. They release their brand new cinema camera and you're like, Yep, that is a bit of me. You will then find yourself with a beautiful cinema lens kit that is full frame and it is ecosystem locked. It is so much more expensive and hard work when you want to change camera systems if you have to change all of your lenses at the same time. Now let's do the exact same scenario again, but this time we purchase the PL mount lenses. We buy an adapter to get them on our E-mount FX3 or FX6. They are fully manual lenses, so we lose nothing in terms of control or information. And then comes along the brand new technology in the new Fanset cinema camera. And all you have to do is change an adapter that is normally just a couple hundred dollars. And that's without even getting into the fact that if you did a multicam shoot, and use different brands of cameras, there is pretty much always somewhere to get a PL mount on all brands of cameras. And more importantly, higher companies normally have a way to get all their cameras to PL mount because they will own expensive PL glass. Now there is a drop in filter system that goes at the back of the lens and this only comes on the mirrorless mounts like the E mount, RF mount, L mount and G mount. But the PL mounts have something really similar where you screw on the filter to the back so it is definitely not worth picking the mirrorless lenses just to get that dropping filter system at the back. Right, before we jump into the footage I have captured over the last month on these lenses, please hit the subscribe button because I love film technology and film gear. You probably love film technology and film gear. This just makes sense, right? Come on, hit, hit the button. Right, now let's dive into my impressions and the footage from using these Nisa Athena lenses. The first thing that is going to jump out at you with these lenses is the size. These things are super small. The metal housing and the denseness of the lenses I would say gives them an expensive feel. You're expecting them to weigh more with the size of them so when you pick them up your brain's a little bit like oh this is quite heavy for its size. When you are creating affordable cinema lens kits aimed at solo operators or someone who's going to have one or two assistants on these small kind of micro budget shoots, then size is so important. And Nisa have absolutely nailed it with the size, weight and feel of these Athena lenses. They come in this nice hard case with a custom cut foam that is really well made. It's not the like cheaper stuff that flakes away. They come with really well made lens caps with like rubber inserts and there is a nice dark black felt inside of the front lens cap. They all have nice big bright colours on them so you know which lens you're going to grab out of the set. It's really thought through from a user perspective. Nisa even throw in some free filters when you purchase a kit. I don't know if this is an offer at the moment or it's going to be staying on forever but it's definitely a welcome addition. There is currently five lenses available at the moment. There is a 14, 25, 35, 50 and 85. This pretty much covers you for most scenarios, 
except one or two that we'll talk about a bit later. They are all the same size with matching gears across aperture and focus. And most importantly, they are all pretty much the same weight. Now this is an amazing feature at this price point. When you are swapping them out on a gimbal, you don't really need to adjust that much. And even when it comes to swapping them on a dolly, a tripod, handheld shoulder rigs, being able to keep the same balance is so important on saving time. They have an isometric scale, what means all the markings across all the lenses match up. All the lenses in the kit have a 300 degree focus throw again that matches up. This makes a first AC or a focus puller's life so much easier. The full kit has an 88mm outer diameter on the front for matte boxes and a 77mm thread for thread on filters. This is a bit tricky when it comes to the 40mm as obviously these are full frame lenses and at 14mm full frame, especially if you're shooting open gate, you are definitely going to get loads of that filler in the shot. But as I mentioned in the intro, you can get screw on filters for the back and this is really cool. You can get NDs, mist filters. All these lenses are T1.9 except the 40mm that is T2.4. This is pretty common across most cinema lenses. They all have 10 aperture blades to try and keep that consistent look and feel in the bokeh. And because they are full frame lenses, they cover an image circle of 46 millimeters. This should cover you all the way up to like an Arit Alexa LF or a Red VV. Nisa are big on macro contrast when it comes to these lenses. This is something that is often overlooked and I'm no expert in it myself. But what I believe it is, is if you think of normal contrast as being the blacks and the whites, and if you add more contrast, you are kind of pulling everything closer to the black point, everything closer to that white point, then macro contrast lives in the middle of those blacks and whites. It's kind of the contrast that exists in the greys of your image. So let's talk about how I interpret the look and feel from these lenses. I would describe it as like clean and clinical, but not the way that photography lenses do it with like sharpness. But that is almost a good thing as when it comes to capturing video, we're after like an organic look and not necessarily an artificial feel in contrast. They do not scream like character and personality. They're very like a cinema lens that you can own and use across multiple jobs. But I would describe them as having an expensive look. When using these around some of my other cinema lenses in on higher, and photography lenses I own and my DZ or film lenses. Every time I come back to them, they did have a look to them that I could recognize. The way I like to see it is the more personality and character you add to a lenses, the versatility comes down on the other side. At this price point, they have really, really controlled chromatic aberration and is better than my DZ or film lenses that I currently own. One of the strongest points is focus breathing. You would have to extremely pixel peep on these lenses to find any focus breathing at all. I always like when lenses have really low focus breathing and you almost are delayed in the way you notice the focus pull. And that's something these lenses are really Good at. Finally, before we move on from this section, it is really important to get good consistency across your lenses when buying them in a kit. So I took all of the lenses, shot my test chart with the same setting, same lighting, etc. On the screen, all the lenses other than the 40mm match really well in terms of colour. There is a bit of a warm tint to that 40mm and to correct this I had to move it in the raw settings from 5600 Kelvin to 5300 Kelvin temperature. So this is not the end of the world and can be corrected in post really easily. Punching in to 600%, again the 14mm is a little softer. That seems to be the lowest performing out of this kit. But strangely here, the 35mm also looks softer and has a little bit more chromatic aberration, which is really strange as I've been using the 35 an awful lot over the past month, swapping it between the 85, 50, 25, and I've even edited and color graded a project shot on these and I did not notice a single thing. So I would take that with a pinch of salt. So next up, I'm gonna look at where these lenses belong in the market and do a shootout with my own DZO film lenses. Before we get into that, I need to tell you about audio. Now, for those who don't know what audio is, it is a music subscription service. It has everything any creator could ever need. Sound effects, music, you name it. It even has a new cool AI link match feature. And it gets even better because audio have teamed up with me to give anybody watching this video 70% off 
if you have never used it before. So please drop down. It is a very top link in the description. You can start from really small amounts. I personally use it myself and think it's great. 70% off link in the description. Probably one of the strongest points of these lenses is price. You get the full five lens kit, which has a space for a six lens that we'll talk about in a sec. You also get those three filters that I mentioned about in the intro, and you get all this for under 6K USD. Now this in terms of cine lenses is extremely competitive. Only five or 10 years ago, if you talked about full frame, cinema lenses in a five lens kit with a hard case that would be so expensive but as time moves on things get cheaper manufacturing and technology gets better and nisa are not the only people in this space creating full frame cine lens kit we even have the big players in the lens game dropping down into this exact space we have the cook sp3s and we also have the Zeiss Nano Primes that have just been announced at the time of filming this video. Because of the reputation and look that they can achieve from those lenses, you're going to need 20 to 30k USD if you're planning on buying them. So understanding the price difference, I do not believe that Nisa and Cook and Zeiss are aiming for the same buyer. Someone who is aiming for the same buyer, and I've actually purchased their lenses, is DZO film. I personally own and have been shooting on DZO film lenses for the past two or three years now and that alone puts them a couple years in front of Nisa in terms of being in the market getting user feedback maybe they've learned a couple things that Nisa still have to learn who knows but that sets us up perfectly for a shootout between my 25mm DZO lens and the 25mm Nisa Athena. So we've got both 25 millimeters wide open. The Nisa is at T1.9 and the DZO film is at T2.1. As you can see, even with a raw file in my editing software, these are very close in terms of performance. I would say that there is a little more contrast in the DZO film lens, but the Nisa has more separation and has a little more matte feeling to those highlights, which is something that I really look for in a lens. Punching into 400% to compare sharpness, and even on the raw files in Resolve before compression here, they are really close. But I would say the Nisi lenses are a little bit sharper on my eyes. Looking into how the colors are rendered in both the lenses, I did go through comparing individual chips on the vector scope to see if there was any differences, but there's not much to report. Finally, let's look at flares. Both lenses do not like to flare. They try and like prevent it, I would say. And this may not be to everyone's taste, especially in cinema glass as the most famous cinema glass is well known for its flares. Comparing them both, I would say in terms of elements to the flares, they are really close, but Nisi holds contrast a lot better when the flare is coming from the edge of the lens, and that is normally where problems can occur. So I would say this is probably a slight win to the Nisi lens. And finally, as I do in all my reviews, Nisi did send me these lenses, uh, but I've got to send them back. I do not get to keep them. And I'm going to tell you guys what I do and do not like about them. My first gripe would be that there is no macro lens in this kit. I did ask Nisa if they was going to release a macro lens and they said it is an idea and an option in the future. So interpret that yourself. They did mention that there is this close up filter that screws on the end of the 50 mil to get a kind of macro effect. It does look pretty good but I do not think it is a replacement for a proper 100mm macro lens. While we are on the subject of adding lenses, I guess a negative could be that because these are such new lenses, there is only the five available. You have DZO Film, even at roughly the same price point, selling 10 lens kits because they have been doing it for a couple of years. But they have told me there is three more lenses coming at this year's NAB. We are getting an 18mm, a 40mm and a 105mm that should match in weight, size, and blend into this kit. I did not know whether to add this one in, but I guess it is the 14 millimeter. The way that all the lenses match so well in terms of image quality, and then the 14 millimeter is a bit of an outlier. I promise you, this is something that is really common amongst all cine lens kits, and pretty much all of them I've ever used. I think these lenses are more important in today's world than ever. With cinema cameras getting much smaller and much better, and more importantly, more affordable, these are almost the matching companion to that philosophy. They are smaller, more affordable, and much better than what we have ever got at this price point before. I'm that impressed with them, I'm probably gonna purchase a pair out of my own money, 
to use for my everyday lenses across my projects and shooting most of my YouTube content when I don't need autofocus. And the only question left now is with cameras getting so amazing from the phone in your pocket to the cheapest cinema camera, could you even tell a difference if you did not know the brand name? Well, I put myself through that exact test. Watch the results here.